Vic's Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, Vicks Vapronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory in Charlotte Bronte's immortal classic, Jane Eyre. You know, more and more millions of people are using Vicks Vatronol nose drops to relieve distress of head colds. Benefit by their experience. Ladies and gentlemen, today from the stage of the matinee theater, Vicks brings you Charlotte Bronte's unforgettable masterpiece. A love story as wild and unpredictable as a storm over the English moors. The story of Jane Eyre. Thornfield Hall. Gray and forbidding in the early dawn. The biting wind drives across the lonely stretches of heather and hurls itself against the great house. It is an eerie, somehow evil house. A house with only the faint glimmer of candlelight through a single grated window in the west wing. And in the window, the shadow of a woman, stern and erect, silhouetted in the half-darkness. <laughs> Mustn't be best, Miss Bertha. <laughs> I wonder what she'll be like, Bertha. If Adele's new governess should find Thornfield Hall a cheerful place with laughter such as yours. Fire. Fire in the sky. Fire in the sky, eh? You'd like to see Thornfield go up in flames and all of us perish in the ruins, would you? Well, perhaps someday that may be the fitting end to all this. But not now, while revenge is so sweet. I, Grace Fool, shall see that nothing saves your... Jane Eyre. Really? My name is Grace Poole, Mr. Rochester's housekeeper. I expect you should be here any moment. What a wonderful fire. The longer you stay in Thornfield, the more you'll appreciate warmth, Miss Eyre. Pardon? Oh, here's Mr. Rochester. You may go upstairs, Miss Poole, where you belong. Yes, sir. Miss Eyre? Yes, sir? I saw the coach drive up while I was riding on the moors. Welcome to Thornfield Hall. Thank you, sir. Well, sit down. You're quite young, and you're not unpleasant to the eye. Though obviously too fair and ill in spirit to endure in this, this house of gloom. I believe I shall find it very comfortable. That remains to be seen. I don't understand. Mr. Rochester, I heard the coach. Is she here? What are you doing out of bed, Adele? I, I only thought... Never that... mind what you thought. Adele, this is your new governess. Your daughter's lovely, Mr. Rochester. This is not my daughter. She's my ward. Who? Oh. Mademoiselle Aya. <laughs> See, I cannot say your name. That is because they are mostly friends. Then you must call me Miss J. Oh, merci. That is much better. Now, Adele, take yourself upstairs. You will have plenty of time to know Mademoiselle Ayer. Monsieur, I'm sorry if I do something wrong. Go on, go on. Do as you're told. Monsieur. Well, you thought me brusque with the child, didn't you? You appraised me as though I were the one who required references. I understand very well that I'm the servant and you are the master. Where did you come from, Miss Ayer? Lowered school. Oh, a charitable institution, isn't it? How long were you there? Eight years. Eight years. You must be a hardier soul than you appear. Your parents? I have none. I see. Well, for heaven's sake, say something. What shall I say? Whatever you like. Don't stand there looking so self-righteous. What do you think of me? Am I... Am I handsome? No, sir. Hmm. Tactful young lady. Go on. What fault do you find with me? Look well. Do you think me a fool? Do you find me hard and ruthless? Your manner is strange and unpredictable. 
It's Rochester. There's no need for alarm. Didn't you hear? It was ghastly. Nonsense, nonsense. It's only the servants. Probably Grace Poole, my housekeeper. Sometimes she lets her spirits get out of bounds. If I were you, I wouldn't let anything I hear disturb me, Miss Eyre. Bertha, you've been very naughty these last few weeks with your laughter. <laughs> what must Miss Eyre think? Fire sky. Fire. I'll tell you what she thinks. I see it in her eyes whenever she looks at me. Your husband has blamed your stupid laughter on me. And she wonders what diversions I find here in the West Wing to make me so wildly happy. <laughs> Look at them riding on the moors. Don't they make a handsome couple up there on Beach Hill, Craig? Do you come here often? As often as I need to. What do you mean? I mean when my soul is oppressed and there seems no end to the darkness in which I live. The moor is beautiful. No, it's barren and savage. And only the meanest flowers can survive here. Heather that claws into the earth and resists wind and storm. If there's beauty in it, it's the majesty of its unconquerable spirit. And to know it, you must stand here when the wind and rain are like a whip lashing the breath out of your throat. In a moment like that, you can... You can almost believe that a man's spirit can find the same strength and defiance to crush down pettiness and deceit. And... And even... Madness. Well, we might sit down, Miss Eyre. Oh, yes, thank you. You know, I, I've i observed your almost saintly patience with my ward. Adele loves being spoiled. She's a mother's daughter. Now, that when she was a high-spirited woman, Lily, a French beauty who charmed English gold out of my English britches. Are you sure you want me to hear this? Adele is her child. Another sin for me to account for. Aren't you shocked? No. You, you see that beech tree just below the west wing? Yes. With its gnarled limb. I've often fancied it one of the hags who appeared to Macbeth on the heath of forest. I fancied her saying, you like Thornfield? And then with a bony finger, she'd write in the air and lured hieroglyphics that run the entire length of the west wing. Like it if you can. Like it if you dare. And you know what I put myself saying? No. I shouted back. I will like it. I dare like it. And I'll keep my word. I'll overcome every evil that stands in the world. Mr. Rochester, it's raining. All right, we'll go back. You'll know what it means to ride in the teeth of the storm. And before you know it, we shall be back to the quiet refuge and cheerful heart of Thornfield Hall. <laughs> Rochester, wake up. Wake up. Yeah, what's that? What's that? The what? curtains, they're on fire. Jane, what is it? Help me, sir. Stay away from those curtains, Jane. Hand me the water jug. Yes, sir. I'll tear them down. Yes. Yeah. Well, be careful. Never mind about me. <coughs> Open the window. This <coughs> confounded smoke is terrible. <coughs> Close the door. There's... <coughs> There's no use of alarming the household. <coughs> I must have fallen asleep in my chair. How did this happen? I don't know. Adele woke me up. I heard someone laughing. The same awful laughter. Good Lord. I rushed out into the corridor. Your door was open and I saw the flames. Yes. What else did you see? Something brushed against me in the darkness. Something brushed. It must have been Grace Poole. Listen to me, Jane. You must say nothing of this to anyone. Just who is Grace Poole? She is... How many times do I have to tell you she's my housekeeper? Won't you tell me what's wrong? Let me help you if I can. No one can help me. Uh, no, Jane. Don't go. I must. It, it's cold in here. Then, then come closer. You're trembling. I, I don't feel I should stay in this house any longer. But you, you must. You can't go away. I don't want to. I've come to love it here, and I've been happy, but can't you tell me... I can't tell you anything. Someday, perhaps, I'll be free to make you understand. 
But promise now you'll stay. Will you, Jane? Will you? Yes. Yes, I will. Ah, oh, bless you, Jane. Bless you. picnics until Miss Jane came. We're going to have many more, dear. But, Monsieur Rochester, if you send me off to school, will Miss Jane stay at Thornfield and wait for me to return? I don't know. Perhaps I may decide to take her with me to the moon where we live in one of the white valleys among the volcano tops. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. But you will have nothing to eat. You will starve. We'll gather manna to eat, morning and night. Why, of course, and the hillsides of the moon are white with manna. Now, my little chatterbox, why don't you run along and gather some of the flowers over there? Miss Jane and I will watch you from the crag, and when you're through, I'll, I'll be down to fetch you. I know what I will do. I will make a wreath of bluebells. I will make one of the Hmm. Oh, just smell the heather. Let me see you do that again, Jane. What, sir? Breathe in deeply like that, as though you were drinking in all the beauty of the world. The world. How little I know about the world. Yes? What would you like to know of it? Everything. Well, I'll tell you everything there is to know. It'll take a surprisingly short time to acquaint you with it. Everything there is to see of the world, you can see right here. All the beauty, the savagery, the mystery of the world right here. The sun like gold on the purple heather. There's nothing anywhere as glorious as that. Jane, you... You see that hawk circling the sky, waiting to plummet down on, on some unsuspecting prey? Where else would you find such calculating savagery? And drabness? That's all about us, too. The desolation of the moor. It's bare rock and thistle biting at your legs as you walk, and... Over there... Housing as much mystery and darkness as ever crowded the human soul, Thornfield Hall. Yes, Jane, all the world is right here. I can't believe that's all there is to it. Back at Lowood School, I used to lie awake at night and dream about all the wonders I read about in books. The islands of the Pacific... The golden domes of Constantinople. Yes, but nothing as wonderful as you lying there, smiling up to the sky. Oh, Jane. Jane, you're lovely. You shouldn't say that, Edward. Edward. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. You couldn't go on calling me Sir and Mr. Rochester. No, Jane. Jane, I've no right to say this. I've no right to, but I can't stop myself. I, I... What is it, Edward. I love you. I know. You? You know? Yes. You see, I love you too, Edward. Oh, Jane. My darling. My darling. Edward. You're so unhappy. Because my soul is my own. I have no right to love anyone. Yet I must have you. There's nothing else in life for me. We can face anything together if you love me. Oh, Edward, what is it? What can there be that you can't tell me? There's nothing, nothing. You can't love me very much if you can't trust me. Oh, Jane. Jane. My dearest. I love you so much more than a kiss can tell. Oh, but Jane, suppose once, once say you committed a blunder. And suppose as a result of that blunder, that stupidity, you were plunged into a lifetime of darkness and hate. That would be horrible, wouldn't it? It would. Yes, but if a time came and you saw the hope of your salvation right within your reach, love, sanity, and gentle warmth, Tell me, Jane, would you not claim it despite every obstacle, every custom or convention? Would you not take it? I cannot say without knowing more. Oh, of course. 
course you can't. And that's why it's up to me to take it. And by heaven, I'm going to. Jane, I want you to marry me. So soon. Right away. In just a moment, Act Two of Jane Eyre, starring Victor Jory. Friends, have you ever noticed how some people seem to resign themselves to the misery of a cold in the head? They just suffer and do nothing to help ease the sniffles, sneezes, and stuffiness. Maybe you're guilty yourself of such neglect. And if that's the case, listen. You really ought to know how, how quickly Vicks Vatronol brings wonderful relief from head cold distress. And it's so simple. All you do is put a few drops of Vatronol in each nostril. And instantly, you can feel this specialized medication start to soothe the irritation, reach congestion, and open up the nasal passages. Your breathing becomes easier in no time at all. Yes, friends, when you see for yourself how Vatronol brings such quick relief from discomfort of head colds, you'll know why so many thousands of people keep their Vatronol always handy at home and at work, ready to relieve head cold distress. Now, why don't you try Vatronol? You'll be glad that you did. Just follow the simple directions in the package. Vicks Vatronol Nose Drop. Curtain now rises on the second act of Vic's Matinee Theatre, starring Vic Jory as Rochester and featuring Gertrude Warner as Jane Eyre. Evening. The sky glowers angrily over the moors. In the great gloomy hall of Thornfield, Edward Rochester is carrying out his vow to marry Jane Eyre. I require and charge you both, Edward Rochester and Jane Eyre, that if either of you knows of any reason why ye may not lawfully be joined together in matrimony, ye do confess it. Wilt thou, Edward Rochester, have this woman for thy wedded wife? No! This cannot be! He cannot take this woman for his wife. What? Mr. Rochester, I... see, that man, whoever he is, he's mad. Edward! Go on with the ceremony. Please, sir, what's the meaning of this interruption? My name is Briggs. I'm a solicitor from London. By the merest coincidence, my client, Richard Mason, learned of this, this travesty. This man, Mr. Rochester, already has a wife. His wife is Bertha Mason, sister of my client. She is living right here in this house. Edward, what is he saying? Commit me... I shall answer that, that. I affirm and I can prove that Edward Rochester was married to Bertha Mason in Jamaica, West Indies. No, he can't mean that. Well, it seems that marriage, my dear, like murder, will out. Mr. Rochester, if this is true, how could you... How could I what? Please rector no platitudes. Come, all of you. As long as you know about my wife, you should meet her. This, this way, please. <laughs> Now, my friends, you shall see the mistress of Thornfield Hall. Mrs. Poole, we have company. Friends to see my wife. What, what do you mean? You know she's asleep? Come in, Rector, Mr. Briggs. And there you see your client's sister. And Jane. This sight should be more eloquent than anything I could have said in words. Wake her up, Miss Mrs. Poole. Wake her up! Wake her up, I said. You heard me? Yes. Better. Better. Oh. oh, this is too horrible. Steady, Jane. Well, gentlemen, speak. This is my wife. Ten years I've borne with that. No, she wasn't mad at first, but she came of a mad family, and it wasn't long, long before I knew it. And now the law in the form of Mr. Briggs is here to keep me tied to this... this maniac. I only did what I thought was right. Hear him, Jane, what the solicitor thought was right. Everybody seems to be the judge of what's right and what's wrong but me. Tell me, gentlemen, is 
Is hers the only woman the embrace I'm ever to know? Oh, you're frightening us. All her endearments the only one I'm to have through, through all my empty days. You're intelligent men. Judge now if I haven't the right to love this girl. Compare these clear eyes with those of that mad woman and then judge me. I defy you, man of the gospel and man of the law. And remember, as you judge, so shall you be judged. I can't stand this. I can't look at her. I must leave. Jane. Jane. <laughs> Jane, Jane, I must talk to you. Oh, no, don't, don't turn away from me. Don't shrink from me, though, as though I was some kind of a monster. Have you ceased loving me? No. I do love you. Now more than ever. Yet I must leave you. Must leave Thorn. No, no, in heaven's name, no, no. You're the only woman I shall ever want as long as I live, Edward, Jane. we're only torturing ourselves. Oh, Jane, Jane, my darling, be merciful. I beg of you. Edward, you're hurting me. I see I've lost you. You're stronger than I am. Poor Edward. I don't know who's strong. But I must leave. I'll have old John drive me to Millcoat in the morning. Goodbye, my dearest. Hope the coach isn't rocking you too much, Miss Eyre. What? Oh, I'm all right, thank you. Uh, uh, begging your pardon, what's all this talk about the master's crazy wife? Oh, please, John. I don't want to talk about that. Oh, well, as you wish, Miss I I was only inquiring. Well, look! Stop, John, stop! Whoa, whoa! What, what is it, Miss? Look back there. Can't you see it? A fire. A house on fire. Well, Lord help us, you're right. It's Thornfield. Yes, and it's, it's blazing like <coughs> it is. Turn around, John, turn around. And hurry, hurry. Hey, gee up there, gee up there. Oh, Miss Jane. Adele. Miss Jane, I, I'm so frightened. Oh, come here to me, dear. Come here. <laughs> You must be cold standing out here in the wind. Mrs. Poole, what happened? Don't let her come near me. It's bad. Bad, Adele? That mad fool of a woman. Always babbling about fire in the sky. She stole the keys out of my pocket again. Took a lamp and set fire to your room. Oh. Jane. Jane, what are you doing here? It would, I... Well, I... now you see Thornfield in its crowning glory. As long as you're safe, I don't care. <laughs> Mrs. Poole, good Lord. But, Lord, she's still in there. Mrs. Poole, I thought you told... I tried to drag the wretch out, but she ran back in her room and locked herself in. Oh, dear God, dear God, I can't leave her in there. Edward! Edward, come back, come back! There's no use going after him unless you want to die, too. Oh, I should never have lived. You should never have come here in the first place and tried to play the role of mistress. Look, they're in the window. She's coming out of the room. Edward! Edward, don't go after him. The Rochester he'll never get back. <gasps> Look, Miss Eyre, the whole West Wing is beginning to crumble. <laughs> Much better. Had he lived through that night, I'll never know. May I go in and see him now? Yes. But just one moment. Yes? I didn't want to tell you this. But he's all right. You said he was. He'll live, but... But what? Miss Eyre, I'm afraid Mr. Rochester will never see again. Blind? Yes. Oh. Thank you for telling me, Doctor. There. It's Jane. I didn't mean to waken you. Wake me. I shall never be awake again. 
I'll always be at your side. Strange. Strange to hear your voice without seeing that strong little face. Let me... Let me have your hand. You'll never be alone. As long as I live. I'll not have you chained to me as a nurse. I want to be your wife. You... Do you know what you're saying? Do you, do you know what it means? I only know that I love you. No, I'm still the master in my own house. You must leave at once. I'm staying, Edward. And there's nothing you can say to stop me. Nothing I can say. Gentle Jane. Thin as a reed, but rooted so strong. What shall we do? Shall we go to the moon, the white valleys, the volcanoes, away from all the meanness of the world? Just you and I. And I'll get the manna for you, morning and night. The plains and the hillsides are white with it. Yes, dear. Wherever you go, I shall go. But right now, I want to pull back these curtains. Pull them back and let the sunlight in. There. I shall be your eyes now, my darling. Tell me then, what do you see? I see the sun like gold on the heather. Yes. I see a sky with not a shred of cloud in it. I see more blue bells than Adele can make into wreaths for the three of us. As long as we live. Yes, yes, yes. Don't stop talking, Jane. Let me hear your voice. Thornfield is lovely today. Is it? Yes. Lovely. As lovely as you are, my darling. As lovely as the world before us. If you say so, I'll believe in Jane. Just as now I... I believe in God once more. In just a moment, a word from Mr. Jory. You know, there are an awful lot of folks suffering from a cold in the head, miserable with stuffiness and constant sniffling and sneezing. If you are one of them, my friend, will you do a simple thing to help relieve the misery? Just put a few drops of Vicks Vatronol in each nostril, that's all, and instantly Vatronol will start to work right where trouble is. It soothes the sneezy irritation... It helps relieve congestion. It reduces swollen membranes and opens up the nasal passages so that breathing becomes easier. So, friends, let me repeat. If you are suffering from a cold in the head and want quick relief from distress, by all means, try Vatronol. I think you'll appreciate this friendly tip. Just follow the simple directions in the package. Vicks Vatronol Nose Drops. <laughs> This is Victor Jory. Your choice for next Sunday's play is the tender and romantic Paramount picture which starred Charles Boyer and Olivia de Havilland in Hold Back the Dawn. I want to thank you very much for your kind letters and ask you once again to please help us select the plays to follow. It is our desire to present your favorites at all times. Write me care of Vic's Matinee Theater, Columbia Broadcasting, 22, New York. Today's play, Jane Eyre, was adapted by David Victor and Herbert Little, Jr., and was directed by Richard Sandville. The role of Jane Eyre was played by Gertrude Warner. Music for the series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Victor Jory is currently co-starring with Miriam Hopkins in The Perfect Marriage. Be sure to listen next week when Vic, the makers of Vic's VapoRub, Vic's Vatronol, Vic's Cough Drops, and Vic's Inhaler, present the mass Theater's production of Hold Back the Dawn, starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.